This is ACMI News, recognized nationwide as the first place winner of the 2022 Hometown Media Award for News Access. The highly hyped red wave turns into somewhat of a red ripple in this year's midterm elections. ACMI News talks to some Arlington voters about their hopes for at least the next two years. Another banner year for Arlington's International Film Festival at the Capitol Theater. ACMI News checks area listings for showtimes and hits the red carpet to talk to moviegoers and award-winning filmmakers about the timely themes this year on Arlington Silver Screen. And what do mortadella, capicola, provolone cheese, and Genoa salami have in common with a football field? A D'Agostino Blitz. This is a sandwich for the ages. ACMI News starts right now. From McLennan Park to Spy Pond, from Poets Corner to the Mystic River, we have Arlington covered, giving you stories that count from people who care. Reliable, trustworthy, dependable. This is the 2022 nationwide award-winning ACMI News. The midterm election is now history, and history was made here in Massachusetts, especially for women. Hello, I'm Summer Maxwell. And I'm James Milan. So glad that you could be here to join us today. We get a reprieve from all those campaign ads, placards, and signs, at least for now. Here you see Arlington voters at Town Hall Tuesday adding to the tally, helping to elect women to fill five out of six statewide offices. Democrat Maura Healy was the clear pick to be the next governor with more than 60% of the vote. Healy makes history as the first woman elected governor in Massachusetts and the first openly lesbian governor elected in the nation. ACMI News spoke to some Arlington voters who voiced their concerns for the future nationally and locally. I think what we really need to be voting for is for people who are willing to sit down together and have real conversations. And um, I just get so worried that so many of the um, candidates that are running across the country are, are fueling this notion that um, everything is corrupt, that um, nobody can be trusted, that um, our elections are fake. And, and if we really buy that, then it is the end of our democracy. Past two years, I, you know, we uh, see how the country goes and this election is going to determine how the next two years or, or even longer is how the country will go. So I think it's a very important midterm for everybody to come out and vote. This midterm election is the probably the most important in my lifetime. Um, Given partisan politics, given the direction of, like the Republican Party, want to control women's bodies uh, and really want to kind of take control of people's civil rights, in my opinion, um, it's important for us to show up. And it's important us for, to show up at a national level and it's important for us to show up at a state and local level to make sure that we have the right representatives that represent the views of the people, um, even if that may not be the case at a national level right now, at least in our hometowns and our states, we have the ability to have a little bit more uh, say in our government. It's important to me that Massachusetts stays strongly um, in the blue camp because of the need for climate change and also um, the access to abortion, which is health care, you know, and um, so that's being severely restricted. And, you know, if the Republicans win the Congress, then it probably looks like we're going to be contending with a federal law to ban abortion. So that's really problematic to me. Get the latest results in all statewide races, just go to www.sec.state.ma.us. Again, that's www.sec.state.ma.us. Arlington Police and the U.S. Postal Inspection Service are investigating reports of a thief or thieves making off with the mail in recent months. And it's happening at these mailboxes right in front of the Court Street Post Office. Police say some of the stolen mail contained checks, and those checks reportedly have been cashed for amounts much larger than the face amounts. Police are looking to see if some of the stolen checks are being washed, meaning the original face amount on the check is erased and changed before being cashed. ACMI News contacted the Postal Inspection Service. Although they remained tight-lipped about these reported crimes and any specifics, they say that an investigation is ongoing.
If you frequent D'Agostino's Deli on Mass Ave, you know most of the time you have to take a number and wait, which you don't mind because their food is outstanding. This week, one of their sandwiches was outstanding on the football field at Arlington High School in a very big way, and it was all for a great cause. ACMI News Director Jeff Barn discovered life is better between two pieces of bread, or in this case, a fresh Italian roll a 200-foot Italian roll. The Arlington High School football field on a crisp New England fall day. No audibles called on the gridiron today, but there is an edible all 200 feet of it. Yeah, it was, uh, it, I was walking the dog. I had this silly idea. Um, the idea started with, uh, you know, I wanted to bring some, some light to people in need and specifically families in need. And uh, the event has grown, it's really evolved, and it's turned into bigger than I could have imagined it. And uh, it's just nice to have the community come out and help me and uh, have my team at D'Agostino's and the school committee staff be a big part of it and help me out with it as well. We're really thrilled to partner with D'Agostino's on this um, and to have our staff get fed on their professional development day and to have a little bit of fun in the process. Through hard work, great food, and a friendly atmosphere, D'Agostino's has become a bona fide Arlington institution over the years. On this November the 8th, Election Day, D'Agostino's voted to give back to the community by constructing this 200-foot-long Italian sub, two-thirds of a football field long, accompanied by several side dishes. This is a nice uh, diversion from the rigors and the, the, the stress of Election Day as well. I mean, this is a perfect day to have something like this. It's like, just let your hair down and enjoy the day. Right, and, and I've said before, it, uh, Election Day can be a very polarizing day. Um, Having it today is important for me and for uh, our organization because no matter what side of the coin you fall on on election day, you come together. Everyone has to eat. Everyone has to drink. And this is a way to bring everyone together in, in, in a real human element and, and give everyone what we all need, food, water, and we don't need the drama or the polarization as much as we may think. This is all part of a fundraiser to donate much-needed money to Foodlink, Arlington's nonprofit that rescues food from grocers and feeds the food insecure. And for dessert, D'Agostino's gave Food Link a hefty check for $7,000. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you to D'Agostino's and thank you to Arlington Public Schools for hosting this event. We're so grateful. Thank we were thrilled when Sam reached out to us with this idea. He told me that it just suddenly occurred to him when he was walking his dog that he should make a 200 foot long submarine, feed the uh, educators at Arlington High School, and do a Food Link fundraiser. So what ingredients exactly go into a 200-foot sub sandwich? Glad you asked. The culinary artists at D'Agostino's have stuffed this wonderfully fresh Italian 200-foot roll with mortadella, capicola, provolone cheese, Genoa salami, ingredients you're not going to find in a sandwich that's indigenous to Copenhagen. Now, the typical everyday run-of-the-mill garden variety, you've seen one, you see them all, all-American, D'Agostino's foot-long sub weighs about 10 ounces. So multiply that by 200 and you have a sandwich, depending on the toppings, you have a sandwich that weighs anywhere between 130 and 150 pounds. And this weight is soon going to shift from the tabletop to places unknown. Probably. I will definitely have some. D'Agostino's is my favorite. Um, and our teachers are going to come out probably around 1130, grab a sandwich. Uh, for those who can't, we have salads available for them. And then after that, whatever's left, anybody can come and grab. As this bombastic delicacy sits in the autumnal sun along the sidelines, friends and volunteers gather. And three, two, one. Take pictures on the ground and in the skies, and then stand back one final time before the masses partake. That's a lot of cutting. It is. Then it's time to cut this tasty beast into 1,200 mouthwatering pieces to feed deserving public school teachers, students, and staff who are more than happy to wait in queues that would outdo even the most prolonged voting line. It's, it's such a community builder. I think it was brilliant to do it on election day. We know today is a rough day for many people and just kind of bring the community together and celebrate our, our education. And what better way to bring people together than with food, especially from D'Agostino. I couldn't agree more. As far as Arlington's storied history goes, D'Agostino's 200-foot Epicurean masterpiece is the deli's magnum opus, a work of art that rivals even the Trevi Fountain in all of its Baroqueness. Plus, this tastes better. Thank you, D'Agostino's. Indeed, it's hard to think anything but pleasant thoughts while eating a homegrown D'Agostino's sandwich, especially one this captivating and appetizing.
It is indeed the ultimate fall classic. If you go to DAGS in the very near future, congratulate them. Because of San D'Agostino and crew, Dr. Elizabeth Homan, our school superintendent, and Foodlink, everyone had a great time. We're hoping they decide to do this every year. The town of Arlington hosted its kickoff event for the Electrify Arlington campaign on Wednesday, November 2nd. The event was in person and virtual in the main hall at the Arlington Community Center on 20 Academy Street. Attendees learned about the components of this groundbreaking and ambitious campaign, which includes the basics of going electric, and what incentives are available for electronic technologies. Electrify Arlington's goal is to eliminate Arlington's greenhouse gas emissions, the pollutants that cause climate change. Campaign officials aim to power buildings and transportation in Arlington with clean electricity in order to achieve net zero emissions by 2050. If you miss the meeting, not to worry. For more information, just go to the town website, arlingtonma.gov slash electrify. Again, that's arlingtonma.gov slash electrify. Donut Villa Diner has reached common ground. You heard correctly. Donut Villa Diner hopes to open the doors to its fourth location in the former common ground space at 319 Broadway in Arlington Center by the holidays. That, according to Donut Villa owner, Aaron Bushlari. Donut Villa is a retro brunch restaurant that specializes in donuts and diner fare and will seat roughly 200 patrons. Bashlari told the select board last month his restaurant will also serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner, including vegan options and a full liquor license. They are already sprucing up the inside of the restaurant. You'll recall Common Ground shut down two years ago after being at this location for nearly six years. Arlington's old burying grounds is clearly one of the town's historic treasures. It has a sign to tell passersby about the extraordinary people who have been buried there throughout Arlington's history. But up until recently, time and the harsh winter weather faded this placard. Now it has a whole new look, courtesy of Arlington's Director of Veteran Services, Jeff Chunglow. Among the most prominent features you can find here at the Old Burying Ground is a 19-foot-tall granite obelisk honoring those killed in the Battle of Minotomy on April 19, 1775, the first day of the Revolutionary War. Jason Russell and 11 other patriots were buried in a moss grave without coffins and in the clothes in which they fell. It's a plot of land with a very fascinating story to tell, and for years this was the only marker to tell passers-by this extraordinary tale which is why it got a much-needed makeover by Arlington's Director of Veteran Services, Jeff Chunglow. Again, it's something that's been um, overlooked for quite some time. Um, you know, I'm sure you, you have, you'll have pictures of the before and after. So, um, so it really needed some repair. This aluminum sign was in disrepair for years. It had its share of cracks and other flaws. However, Jeff Chunglo took it upon himself to take the sign home and repair it. It had a bunch of cracks. It's, a, it's an aluminum sign, so, so it took a little work. I had to rebuild some, some of the lettering as well, uh, but I, I, I think it came out very nice and um, just kind of spruced up the, the area a little bit, again, to, to kind of showcase uh, you know, the historical burial grounds, and it does kind of stand out now so people can actually probably read the sign. But no, I, I really enjoy it. Um, and obviously, I, you know, I won't tackle any projects that I can't handle. 
You may recall Chunglo spent weeks planting more than 6,000 US flags on the graves of veterans at Mount Pleasant Cemetery for Memorial Day this year. It's a testament to his dedication to those Americans who served this country in wartime and peace. And in this case, Chunglo is paying homage to those people who served and died in the name of liberty. Uh, but this was a uh, very uh, pretty simple project to do. For ACMI News, I'm Saji Mascara. This hallowed plot of land just behind the first parish Unitarian church was established nearly 200 years ago. Fifty million gallons of sewage-contaminated stormwater flowed into the Alewife Brook from the cities of Cambridge and Somerville last year. That, according to the websites of both cities. Nearly 20 million gallons of that raw sewage flowed through the combined sewer on the Arlington-Cambridge line. Members of the grassroots organization Save the Alewife Brook say the pollution is getting worse. The MWRA says there's a plan in the works to remedy the situation. But that'll take years. Organization members say the longer we wait to fix the problem, the worse it's going to get. If you frequent this pathway just behind the Homewood Suites Hotel in East Arlington, you'll come across this unique mobile, cardboard ghost fish, dangling just above the Alewife Brook, symbolizing the boundless abundance of Alewife that called this waterway home for tens of thousands of years. But they don't anymore. I think the way to think about it, it's a very simple problem. City of Somerville, City of Cambridge, and Mass Water Resources Authority, MWRA, use Elwife Brook as an overflow sewer. Whenever it rains, raw sewage from those three systems end up in the brook. It's a very simple problem. The solution is not so simple. We use the brook as a sewer. And when you use something as a sewer, it smells like a sewer and it looks like a sewer. This problem has been going on for 150 years now. Um, the state has been telling uh, the city of Cambridge for 150 years that they need to stop dumping untreated sewage in this brook. 18 million gallons of untreated sewage pollution came out of this combined sewer alone last year, mainly from Somerville, untreated raw sewage from households and stormwater runoff. Very profitable for the MWRA to keep this open. They talk about combined sewers as being a safety valve for the system. They talk about them as being a necessity, but it's a money-saving, cost-saving alternative. Every discharge that goes into the brook is one more discharge that they escape responsibility for cleaning up. Save the Alewife Brook members say every one of the plans that the MWRA, Somerville and Cambridge have used to reduce or eliminate pollution here in recent years has been relatively ineffective in solving a problem that's getting progressively worse. This highly polluted, contaminated brook is located in a very densely populated area. There are approximately 5,000 people living in the 100-year floodplain of the Alewife Brook. And this is um, a brook that floods uh, regularly. And so the problem is, is that this contaminated water, which contains untreated sewage, ends up in people's homes and it makes people sick. The situation is getting worse now because of climate change. We have asked them to take climate change into account when they do their newest plan because they haven't done that. And what we found in the past few years is that when you have heavier rainfalls, you get more sewage as you would expect flowing into the brook because the sewers are backing up. So we hope that they're going to um, take climate and increased rainfall into account when they come up with their next plan. The MWRA has requested a three-year deadline extension to come up with a plan to improve the conditions here with the promise that a new sewer model includes the projected impacts of climate change on precipitation in the coming decades, something that has never been done before. The plan was due next year. They've asked for a three-year extension to do the plan. So that's, that's, that's three more smelly summers. It's gonna be many more than three more smelly summers, and not only smelly summers, falls, winters, springs, could have that happen also. Save the Alewife Brook members say they'll be doing everything in their power 
to make sure that promise is kept. Because it will take money and it will take engineering and it will take willpower from Cambridge, Somerville and MWRA to do what's necessary to reduce or eliminate the sewage flows into the brook. For ACMI News, I'm Jeff Barnt. ACMI News contacted the MWRA for comment. As of this newscast taping, we have yet to hear back. After two years of screening online, the 12th annual Arlington International Film Festival got underway with scores of films from all over the world. ACMI News went to opening night at the Capitol Theater to talk to filmmakers and moviegoers about the importance of entertaining movie making that has the ability to provoke thought and inspire. On Friday, November the 4th, the festival kicked off with a program honoring the strength of women, which included the 58 minute documentary, How Long Must We Wait? Focusing on the 72 year battle that women fought to achieve the right to vote in the United States. Woman's suffrage is a long story of hard work and heartache, crowned by victory. I had to edit my film over the summer. I had already finished it, and I, I had to add in that Roe v. Wade was overturned. Um, but I absolutely wanted to make a point that we're still not equal, and we have a long way to go. But if suffragists back in the day who didn't have social media their only mode of getting their voice out was just word of mouth and through newspapers and parades and protests. Like if they could mobilize millions of women, we can also do it today. A lot of the people we spoke with tonight say it's so refreshing to see so many young filmmakers coming here with their works of art. Obviously, each and every one of these films here at the Arlington International Film Festival at the Capitol Theater are very entertaining and very well done, but many of them carry a deep meaning a story that needs to be told. Most of these issues are international. We think of them as happening in our own backyard or in our own community, but most of them people can relate to across the world. And with globalization, we know that something that happens, for example, oh, in, say, Ukraine, has an impact on us today um, when we go to the gas pump or go to the grocery store. So I think we're becoming increasingly interconnected by our weather and by our issues and by our belief systems, and this is just another way to show that. Festival goers say this four-day event promotes an appreciation for others through an abiding love for film and its ability to transcend cultures, beliefs, and borders, making our community and the world a better place in which to live. Absolutely, and to have an event like this in Arlington is just perfect because the folks who live here, including myself, just love coming to these events, being in community, and then drawing folks into the community so they can see how great Arlington is. And this effort that um, April and the AIFF do is just a monumental task and comes out flawlessly every year. Yeah, they do a great job year after year. How refreshing is it for you to see all these young filmmakers coming here from all over the world? And, you know, it's not, it's, it's not Spider-Man 42, Revenge of the Whatever. It's it's, it's, it's got a, a, a social message along with a great, well-done film made by a very young filmmaker. And it's about perspective. So as we get more and more perspectives into this filmmaking space, we allow it to be more accessible to more people, more groups, more age groups, more ethnicities. And then you just have a diversity in the film space that is unparalleled and allows us to experience the world in a different way every, through every single film. The AIFF is clearly a treasure here in Arlington, celebrating diversity through independent filmmaking for the past 12 years. This year certainly did not disappoint. Congratulations to Alberto Guzman and April Rank for another successful year. Find out more about the Arlington International Film Festival by going to their website, AIFFest.org. Again, that's AIFFest.org. 
While covering another story two weeks ago, ACMI News came upon local author William Martin, the New York Times bestselling author of over a dozen novels, an award-winning PBS documentary on the life of George Washington, and a cult classic horror film. His novels, like Back Bay, City of Dreams, and Bound for Gold, tell the stories of the great and the anonymous of American history. He now has a new thrilling novel entitled December 41, and we'll let him tell you what the book is about. December 41 is a World War II thriller that begins on the day after Pearl Harbor, when the FBI raids a Nazi compound in Southern California, a place you can still visit if you know where to look for it. They arrest everybody there, because of course they're arresting all of the enemy nationals and uh, all of the people they've been watching for a couple of years. They arrest everybody there except, in my novel, for one guy who gets away. And he's the guy they should have caught because his job is to get to Washington, D.C. and shoot Franklin Roosevelt on Christmas Eve as he lights the national Christmas tree. Right there on the list. Right, that's it. And that's the whole plot. But of course, complications ensue. If you've ever read one of my books, you know about that. And even though you probably know that Franklin Roosevelt survived that night, you will be so involved in the fates of the characters who are trying to stop that guy, that Nazi, that you won't be able to put this book down. And according to our news director, Martin's right. You can't put the book down. And you'll likely lose sleep from reading well into the night. December 41 is on sale right now, just in time for the holidays. And you can buy local. Hit up your local Arlington booksellers for your copy now. And that'll do it for this week's edition of ACMI News. We really thank you for joining us. I'm James Millan. And I'm Summer Maxwell. Have a great week, everyone. We hope to see you next week. You can always check out our latest segments and newscasts on the web at acmi.tv news. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at ACMI News. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You'll find us at youtube.com slash ACMI News. If you have any news tips for us or wish to become a citizen journalist, we'd love to hear from you. Email us at news at acmi.tv or stop by ACMI Studio A at 85 Park Avenue. 